Death is an inevitable and profound aspect of the human experience, an event that brings about irreversible change, not only for the one person who passes away, but also for those who are left behind. Ancient texts like the Garud Puran dive deep into the metaphysical aspects of death, describing it as a journey where the soul transitions from one realm to another, leaving behind the body and all the earthly attachments. According to these texts, when the time of death approaches, a foreboding presence, a thick fog, often described as the messenger of death, manifests. This figure, imposing with its massive form, fiery red eyes, elongated nails, and an eerie smile, appears before the dying person. The messenger's task is to extract the soul from the body and guide it towards heaven, initiating a journey believed to span centuries. However, while the soul embarks on this ethereal journey, there remains a tangible, earthly process that the deceased's families must undertake. This involves a series of rituals, practices and customs designed not only to honour the dead, but also to aid the soul in attaining peace and salvation. Despite being performed regularly, the deeper significance of these rituals often remains shrouded in mystery and is rarely understood by those who perform them. It is said that as soon as the soul departs from the body, it experiences great suffering. The soul attempts desperately to return to its physical form, but the messenger of death firmly pulls it away. Moreover, it is believed that at the time of death, malevolent spirits, those trapped between life and death, circle around the dying person, seeking a new body to inhabit. To protect the deceased from these spirits and to ensure the soul's safe passage, the Garur Puran prescribes several crucial rituals. The first step in these rituals is the purification of the body. The deceased is bathed, clothed in new garments, and cotton is placed in the ears and nostrils. Additionally, the big toes are tied together and the basil leaves are placed in the mouth. These actions are believed to purify the body and prevent any wandering spirits from entering it. This purification marks the beginning of Antiyeshti, or the last rites, a ceremony of great significance in Hindu culture. Following the purification, the body is placed on a pyre made of sandalwood. The pyre is consecrated by a priest to the chanting of mantras, and the eldest son or a close male relative ignites it. As the flames consume the body, it is believed that the soul is released from the earthly bonds. The burning of the body serves not only a spiritual act, but also a symbolic confirmation for the grieving family that their loved one has indeed departed. The sight of the body reduced to ashes leaves no doubt, no hope of return, helping the family come to terms with their losses. In many communities, men also shave their heads as a part of mourning. This physical change is a visible sign of the profound emotional and social transformation that the family undergoes. The shaving of the head, like the burning of the body, serves as a stark reminder that a significant change has occurred. The family must now adjust to life without the deceased, a journey that is both painful and transformative. The soul's journey, however, is far from over. According to Garur Puran, after leaving the body, the soul must traverse a perilous path to reach Yamalok, the abode of Yama or the god of death. This journey is fraught with dangers, with the soul encountering numerous terrifying obstacles. The most formidable challenge is crossing the Vaitarani river, a river filled with blood. It is said that crossing this takes 13 days, during which the soul is deprived of food and water growing weaker with each passing day. Without sustenance, the soul may become trapped, unable to complete the journey. To assist the soul, the living perform the ritual of Pindadan. This ritual involves offering rice balls or pind and water to the soul at specific intervals. According to Garur Puran, there are 16 cities on the path to Yamalok where the soul and the Yamadut or the messengers of death rest. At these rest stops, 
the pind and water provided by the family sustain the soul giving it the strength to continue its arduous journey the significance of pindadan lies not only in its spiritual importance but also in the way it brings the family together during a time of loss for 13 days the family gathers shares meals and reminisces providing emotional support to each other as they collectively mourn their loved one one of the ancient stories that illustrate the importance of these rituals comes from the mahabharat it tells of king sagar who had 60000 sons after establishing his dominance in war and politics king sagar decided to perform the ashwamedh yagya a grand ritual where a horse is sacrificed symbolizing the king's power and authority however when the king was on the brink of completing his 100th yagya indra the king of the devas stole the sacrificial horse and hid it in the hermitage of sage kapil when king sagar's son discovered this they stormed in the sage's abode only to be reduced to ashes by his wrath their premature death left their souls in agony wandering restlessly it was only when the king's grandson performed a ritual of pouring their ashes into the river ganga as advised by sage kapil that their souls attain salvation this practice rooted in ancient tradition is still followed today as families pour the ashes of their deceased loved ones into the ganga believing that this act will bring peace to the departed soul these rituals though ancient continue to play a crucial role in helping families cope with loss the death of a loved one is a profound event that can break individuals and tear families apart in such times these rituals provide a structure a sense of purpose and a means of coming together the mourning period is marked by constant activity with friends neighbors and relatives visiting the bereaved family offering their support and helping with the rituals this collective effort not only honors the dead but also strengthens the bond amongst the living ultimately the rituals associated with death serve a dual purpose they honor the deceased by ensuring their soul's journey to their afterlife is smooth and unimpeded while also providing solace to the living through these rituals the family serves the deceased one last time bathing them clothing them feeding them and offering them water before saying their final goodbye the act of shaving the head a visible sign of mourning also symbolizes the passage of time by the time the hair grows back the family has had the time to process their grief and begin to heal in hindu belief death is not seen as the end but as the beginning of a new journey the rituals described in the ancient texts like the garur puran are not just about honoring the dead but about facilitating the soul's transition from this world to the next world the ultimate goal is for the soul to achieve salvation or be reborn thus continuing the cycle of life these rituals steeped in tradition and spirituality ensure that the journey is as smooth as possible both for the departed soul and the grieving family